Hello ladies, gentlemen, and my NB friends, and welcome back to the Keldian channel. I'm your host, Keldian, and today we're going to do a quick overview of IGN's recent gameplay demo for Metaphor Refantasio. Now that the soon-to-be greatest game of all time, Avowed, is presumably being pushed back to release next year, I can then safely say that Metaphor is the game I'm most excited for this year. I joke on Avowed a lot, but I seriously am looking forward to it releasing. For those unaware, Metaphor is the newest JRPG title by Atlas that will be releasing this coming October. It's taking this really interesting fantasy setting and has been said to incorporate elements from the core Megaton series, but also aspects from the Persona series. I haven't seen every teaser and demo footage to come out, but this came across my feet and I thought I'd give it a watch. I won't go over every little thing on display here, but there are a few things that I think are worth making notation of. So without further ado, let's jump right into this Metaphor gameplay demo thing provided by IGN. First things first, and frankly this goes without saying, but do keep in mind that this is an early build and anything on display is subject to change. If you see footage stutter or hiccup, I promise you that's literally the video from IGN. The game just clearly isn't in the best state right now and seems to struggle during some parts. I'm hoping this gets improved come release, and obviously it could be due to the console or rig being used. I don't know if other outlets that have played the demo have had this problem, but it sticks out here and deserves a mention. Here we have a social event or hangout thing with Stroll, one of our party members. Something I like about this is that since you're traveling to a location and have limited activities, this really emphasizes the sort of thought and pre-planning that can go into which timed activity to spend your time doing. Also notice that our protagonist has written lines that they reply with. They seem to be taking a page out of the book known as Soul Hackers 2. In that game, Ringo, the player controlled protagonist, had voice acting and lines of dialogue and here it seems that we still have control to choose what to say, but the game still shows us the full context of how our protagonist would say these things. While I love silent protagonists in their truest form, I'm not going to just write this off. In fact, I'm curious to see how the game handles this aspect more than anything. Final thing about this social event is that it ends with you getting a point in courage and here we see the different social stats, otherwise known as royal virtues in this game. I'm curious to see how these factor into the game. Will they just be like the typical Persona social stats, or will they have further application beyond blocking you from certain events? It would be really cool if the stats would factor into the character of the protagonist, or affect the story in any way. That may sound far-fetched, but there's clearly some extra presentation around these virtues. They could just be making them seem more important, that could just be dressing for the demo, but I like to think it has some sort of implications for the system as a whole come release. Now we come to the travel based ship battle, the first of two battle sequences in this demo. First thing that icks me is the intervention by the ship's navigator, for lack of a better term. Neuras seems to act as the ship's captain, pilot, whatever. If battles like this are frequent, that's one thing. If battles like this always trigger interference from the crew's navigator, that's another. Futaba and Rize are definitely busted allies, but nothing takes the wind out of my sails quite like the game pausing to show me something cool that basically wins the battle for me. This interference seems minimal, and it really does like an application, it just deals a bit of damage, but it's still a little cutscene that takes some time to process, and it takes over about 5-7 seconds to get through, which might not sound like much, but it will definitely add up over time. A minor complaint all in all, but one worth making in my opinion, because the point of video games is to play them. I don't want to watch this every time if it happens often. You know what I'm saying? Next thing about this battle is look at these graphics. Again, it's early access, but lord almighty, these don't look great. Press turn icons make a return, which I like more than the one more system that Persona adopts. It's a minor thing to make note of, but this will have a serious impact on the flow of battles and shows the blending of the two series. To go with the typical Megaton staples, physical moves cost MP instead of health like they do in Persona. When unlocking synthesis skills for the Protag, you can see one of them is labeled as Heat Riser. Heat Riser is a support skill that increases all stats of a unit by one. It's in Megaton and Persona, and this makes me wonder what skills will be locked behind this new synthesis system. Clearly they aren't all new skills, and will good skills like Heat Riser be usable outside of synthesis as you progress in the game? I have a lot of questions about this new system, and I'm very excited to try it come release. Here's a bit of the synthesis skills, typical attack types of different elements, and it took MP from both participants. That's a really cool balancing mechanic depending on how crazy the skills get. World building here, when using Mage Lightning, the protagonist leaves the demon state to use it, so only certain skills require the appearance of the demon. Interesting. 
and I look forward to seeing how this ties into the lore, if at all. Okay, here's something really cool in my opinion. It actually got me super hyped. There are multiple icons for what I assume are physical skills. I believe, from what I can gather, there are three different physical types. I love the physical split, especially in Persona 3, where there's the three different types. They tried it in Persona 5 with the physical and then gun types. I'm so glad to see a physical split. I'm so glad it's here, and I can't wait to see how far they go with it. Moving right along, we have another social event, this time with Heisenberg. I have very little to say about this that I didn't mention about the other one. Firstly, this is more of a social thing. At the end, we see it ranks up our Hulkenberg rank and we gain a new skill. This leads to a larger issue that I won't mention in this video. I'll see how the actual game treats it before I go on some wild tangent. I'll just say that for now, I'm not too confident about this implementation. At least, I wasn't until I saw this Vitruvian Man stat screen thingy. What the f*** is this and how does it factor in? I must know. It has the names of the archetypes or classes, so I wonder if we can level up or change the classes of our party. Instead of Hulkenberg being a knight, she could be a mage knight, or instead of our protagonist being a magic seeker, he could be a cleric. If so, what options does this open up for the player? I'm very curious to see, and if this is one of those things where they just throw it on the screen and move on. I kid you not, my brain went into overdrive trying to decipher what this was and what it meant, if anything. The last thing I want to mention about the social event is that after the positive reception of having fully voiced social links in Persona 3 Reload, none of the events on Showcase here have full voice acting. I believe both games were in production around the same time, so obviously the Metaphor team couldn't just record lines based on how the community appreciated that aspect of Reload. It's just unfortunate to see. Now I don't mind it too much, I'm perfectly fine with reading, I'm a Pokemon chill. That said, some fans that are new to the franchise that came in from Persona 3 Reload might try Metaphor and could possibly take issue with it. Is it a minor thing to take issue with? Yes, but I won't lie, the fully voiced social links were a huge part of Reload and it kind of did go a long way for that game. My man has horrible posture. Here we have the overworld control scheme. It looks pretty standard. The inter squad battle has me confused, as does the face height, but Foreshadowing, I think we'll see both in just a moment. Here we see some overworld movement, and here we see what I assume is the face sight, which I can only assume highlights enemies, items, things of note on the map. Pretty standard. Then there's a remote Y button prompt to squad battle from afar. This is weird, and it looks like the person playing spams the button a few times before it initiates the battle. We'll see how this works out come release, obviously, but I find it interesting that you supposedly just strike down, quote, weak enemies? but I have the option of doing the squad battle thing from afar on what I assume are not weak enemies. What's the difference? What's the distinction? I don't know. It's not shown here. Can I just strike down and press X on a non-weak enemy to start a battle that way, or do I have to squad battle? It's not really shown, it's not explained, but I am curious about this whole system. And this leads us into the next battle and final segment of the demo. I have nothing to add. The gameplay looks fun, obviously. It stutters a bit again, but you know, that's early access nonsense. The general combat has what we'd expect. It flows very nicely, and I like what's on display. Overall, I think this demo was a great insight into what's to come. I'm very excited for quite a bit, hesitant for other bits, but overall, much looking forward to the end product. I truly hope the graphics and stuttering get improved and fixed. I hope my few worries about certain things on display are just misplaced speculation, and I'm proven wrong. Without a doubt, I'm very much looking forward to Metaphor Refantasio and what it has to offer to the overall Megaton franchise. As you know, or maybe if you don't know, I'm a big fan of this franchise, I'm a big fan of the SMT series, I'm a big fan of Persona. I, I just love them, they're very fun. And the art direction, the world, they look amazing, even if not technically sound graphics wise. It, it still looks really good and I can't wait to see it in full. The parts of the OST that we hear also are amazing. Safe to say I'm very much looking forward to the game. Uh, what what can I say? I'm excited. That's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed the video then please leave a like. If you have any thoughts regarding the game so far or my thoughts regarding this demo, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Also, I'll leave a link to the full demo gameplay from IGN in the description if you want to see what I saw but not chopped up and talked over. Yada yada. Anyways, that's all I have for you today. Have a great one. Okay. Bye bye.